Hi guys. Um, so this is the third book that I'm reviewing. It's a book called Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Um, it's written by Hunter S. Thompson in the year 1971. And um, it was made into a movie, I believe, in 1998 that starred Johnny Depp and Benicio Del Toro. So the movie is about mainly about two characters. One is named Raul Duke, who I think is basically Hunter S. Thompson, and a guy named Dr. Gonzo, who is his attorney, who's, who is, I believe is based off of the character, but the person, Oscar Zeta Acosta. So, uh, you know, th th this is a weird book. Um, I'm not even sure it's even that necessary to summarize it because it's not like there's a really clear storyline where there's a beginning, middle, and end, and there's some ultimate, you know, lesson you learn. It's, it's just more like a series of chaotic events that occur. And uh, there's this quote in the beginning of the book that, before the book starts, that I like, which is, he who makes a beast of himself gets rid of the pain of being a man. And uh, I, li I like that. And I think it's kind of what this book is about. Um, it's just about, and, and they do that through the use of drugs, it's just about people behaving in really extreme ways, you know. Um, the two characters just take, they go to Vegas and they just take like insane amounts of drugs and they drive recklessly and they have, you know, one of the guys has sex with, with, with someone that may, he may or may have raped her. Um, it's just depraved human behavior, basically, is what this whole book is about. And um, it's, it's quite shocking sometimes to the senses to read some of the stuff that's in there. And uh, I'll just do a quick summary. I'll try to keep it quick as possible because I, I don't think the summary is that important here. But basically, it's about these two guys. They're going to Vegas. They're on this red Cadillac. They're going to cover a race there, the mid-400. And uh, they pick up this hitchhiker along the way, and he's just kind of a straight guy from Oklahoma. They call him an Oki, and he's just shocked by what he sees with the two characters taking drugs and behaving very erratically. And he, you know, he has to like, he's like, I want to get out. They let him out. And uh, anyways, eventually they end up in Vegas. They go to cover the race. And it's just more like they take drugs and they do crazy things. There's like some funny anecdotes where they get like 700 bars of soap into their hotel room. I don't even remember why they did that. I don't even know if it was discussed in the book, but that kind of made me laugh. And anyways, eventually one of the guys, the attorney, leaves. He says, I'm going back to L.A. I can't do this anymore. And um, his friend is, so they drops him off at the airport. And then he's like, I want to leave too. I, 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 this is too much for me. But uh, before he leaves the hotel, he gets this telegraph saying that there's some convention, like narcotics type convention, uh, where all these police officers are going to come to a hotel and talk about what's going on with drugs and narcotics and and all that. So he's like, I, you know, I want you, and he's telling um, the Raul character, um, you know, I want you to go and cover this, like go in as an undercover cop or something and cover this con conference. But he doesn't want to do it. So he just leaves and, you know, he doesn't pay for the hotel stay. So he's like, I just got to get the hell out of here before they find out I'm not paying and they arrest me. And but on the way back, he gets caught by the highway patrol and he, I think he runs into that kid that he ran into in the beginning, the hitchhiker again, and uh, eventually he gets a call from Dr. Gonzo, and he's like, hey, you know, what's going on with you? And he's like, well, I'm coming back to L.A. He's like, no, you know, you got to go and cover this story, uh, the, the narcotics thing, and he convinces him to go back to Vegas, and he also comes again, and um, so so when they meet up at the at the hotel, it's a new hotel at the, at the Caesars Palace, he sees his... Um, friend is having sex with this woman. I think his, her name was L Laura or something. And, um, you know, um, and she was like this, I think they met at the flight 
to Vegas and she was um, a young girl that was escaping home if I remember correctly anyways that was out there and weird and they drove driver to another hotel because um, she was on drugs she was on acid and she had never even like taken any drugs before that so they were worried about how she's going to deal with it and anyways it's just one series of crazy things like that after another and um you know they drive around the strip and like get into fights with people and it's just ridiculous the, the way that they behave and um um there's one scene towards the end of the book where they're at a restaurant and they're like hey can you can you um help me find where the american dream is or find the american dream and the guy there was taking it literally he was like oh the american dream that's like this place like i think he was a psychology office or something it's like it's this place this way that way drive here drive there and you'll find it and they they drove there and um they um got there and it's like the place was closed three years ago which maybe is a metaphor for what this book is about which is like the the death of the american dream so, I mean, I think that's all I have for the summary. I, I'm probably missing some details here and there, but like I said, I don't think the summary is that important. Uh, as far as what I think this book is about, um, and it's hard to say. I think a lot of it is about, like I said in that first quote, you know, it's just about humans behaving in extreme ways because, you know, they just want to unwind. They just want to escape from the reality of life so they resort to drugs and all these other things to to do that and it's a tempting uh, thing and you know look i i i'm not i'm not a drug user i mean i, I drink alcohol occasionally uh, a couple times a, a week usually on the weekends and i enjoy it i can't i can't say that i don't enjoy it you know it, it, it's like a it's kind of like a painkiller, you know, an emotional and spiritual painkiller because it just numbs you of all the negative thoughts in your head and all the anxiety you have. And, and it, it works pretty well. And I, sometimes I'm like, man, I, I can see why people become alcoholics because, you know, it's a lot easier to go through life, you know, being drunk all the time because you don't have to, you know, you're, you're, you're sort of not dealing with the normal ruminations and, mental suffering that, that a lot of people have sometimes. But I think we all know deep down that that's not really a solution. You know, first of all, those drugs are addictive and, and you might have a good time with it um, in the beginning, but pretty quickly it will, it will end up causing more suffering than it alleviates. And, um, so that's my view on drugs and I'm, I'm not, you know, I've never really taken any hard drugs in my life. Um, but, um, you know, I get it. I get why people take drugs. It, it, I think a lot of it has to do with not wanting to suffer. It also has to do with just pleasure. You know, there is a pleasure element to taking certain drugs. It exaggerates pleasure and happiness makes can make you feel euphoric i mean i i've had some bouts of anxiety a couple times here and there um where and i've ended up taking um like anti-anxiety medication like a xanax i've only done it a couple times in my life and i mean that's a very powerful drug and it just you just feel so relaxed when you take it you know it's like a better version of alcohol but um and so I imagine some of these drugs that they're taking in, in this book are probably doing something similar. And, um, and uh, I mean, that's just the kind of guy Hunter S. Thompson was. I mean, if you you know, if you know him a little bit, you know he was a big drug user in his life. And um, it's actually kind of a miracle he lived as long as he did with his reckless, on-the-edge lifestyle. And I was watching this Joe Rogan video a couple of days ago where he talks about what an average day is like for, for Lars Thompson. It was, I don't know where it came from, but he was reading something and the guy wakes up at like 3 PM and he takes cocaine and he does this other thing. And then he takes more cocaine, then he drinks coffee, then he smokes a bunch. And 
then he takes acid, then he does this, then he does that, and you're like, holy crap, this guy is, like, you start feeling a lot better about yourself, because you're like, man, you know, I don't like this habit that I have, or that habit that I have, but at least I'm not, you know, psychotic like this man is. So, um, so anyways, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, I don't know, I, you know, look, I mean, the, the characters are, are, you know, they're beastly, they're, they're not, you know, they don't really behave in very ethical ways, or they're not very redeemable characters, which is rare, right? Usually when you read a book, you have good characters and bad characters, and usually the author is trying to present maybe a positive uh, message somewhere in there, but in this book, I don't see that. I think it's mostly a very um, dark and depraved view of humanity. Um, I don't know. I guess, I guess in Hunter's mind, there's this idea. I don't want to speak for him because I, you know, I, I don't know that I can decipher that much just from reading this book. But I think, because he talks a lot about the 60s and how things were great in the 60s during this drug period. And um, I guess he just sees something about the individual, because America is all about the individual and all about being able to do whatever the hell you want. So if you want to take drugs and expand your mind and experiment, that's what, you know, you should be doing. You, know, you don't have to conform to what society asks of you. And uh, I think he kind of is of that mo point of view. And uh, I think it's a very nihilistic view of things. I mean, it, it might be fun and it might be pleasure inducing, um, but ultimately I think it leads to chaos. And, uh, I've been, I've been, you know, I'm a fan of Jordan Peterson. I've been watching a lot of his stuff and read some of his stuff. And uh, I feel like he's like the antidote to, to Hunter S. Thompson because he's talks about taking responsibility and accepting the fact that there's suffering in the world, but to actually take on the suffering and try to um, actually meet it head on and, 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 and live a meaningful life and, and be, be uh, someone that is people can count on, your family can count on, your community can count on. Um, you know, it's, it's just, uh, it's, yeah, I think it's just a different way of looking at the role of, you know, what is the purpose of life? What is the purpose of existence? Is, is it pure satisfaction, pure pleasure, like, like how these characters were behaving? Or is there a deeper purpose to life than that? Um, I don't think that pure pleasure and gratification and and all that. I mean, it might be good in the short term, but I, I don't think that it's a meaningful way to live life if we're being honest with ourselves. Um, so I, I don't think that these two characters are necessarily people you want to model your life around. And I'm not, I'm not saying that the author is necessarily suggesting that you should. Um, but, uh, you know, I guess a lot, all of us, we've all had our time where we go to a bachelor party or we do something like that and we kind of behave in a depraved way and we do it for one day here, two days there. Or so, and maybe that's all he's getting at, um, that people have, you know, have to do that maybe sometimes to, um, um, go through, navigate through life because you can't have a life of pure order and pure, um, you know, purely being orderly and conscientious. Sometimes you need chaos. Sometimes you need adventure. And um, so I think that's what um, this book is kind of exploring is those different extremes of human, um, the experience, you know, the chaos versus order. And um, to what degree, you know, humans should be exploring one or the other. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's my, 
rough take on the book. I, I don't know if my take is really that profound, but that, that's some of the thoughts I have about it. Um, I mean, it's a pretty good book. It has some pretty catchy quotations here and there. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to this website with a bunch of quotations, see if there's any that, that are worth sharing. Um, through it. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely, um, you know, he's a good writer. He's, he's creative, uh, in how he expresses his thoughts and ideas. And, um, actually this, there, there's a couple good ones. This one is about Vegas. No, this is not a good town for psychedelic drugs. Reality itself is too twisted. Actually, that's a good point too, you know, like, you know, you look at Vegas, and Vegas is not exactly the most, um, I think it represents a lot of the things that Hunter S. Thompson hates, right? Greed, you know, you, it's, everything there is kind of fake, right? All the casinos are sort of mimicking things that are real in some other place, and, you know, you just see a bunch of people there just gambling and losing their money and there's something about the place that's kind of soul crushing um so um i guess that's what he was referring to there let me see if there's any other ones that i like Ah, this is the one I wanted to mention. There was also the socio-psychic factor. Every now and then when life gets complicated and the weasels start closing in, the only real cure is to load up on heinous chemicals and then drive like a bastard from Hollywood to Las Vegas to relax, as it were, in the womb of the desert sun. Just roll the roof back and screw it on, grease the face with white tanning butter, and move out with the music at top volume and at least a pint of ether. And uh, this is like a great line. And, uh, you know, I live in Southern California, so I, I could relate to this because, you know, a lot of people like going to Vegas for bachelor parties and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I was like, this is the perfect line to give if you're on a road trip from L.A. to Vegas and you want to go and, you know, do some interesting things while you're there. So um, I think he captures that. Uh, that that way of thinking pretty nicely with that quote but um so yeah overall it was a pretty pretty good book i'll give it like a 3.8 out of five stars just because of you know like quotes like that which you could see he's got a good way with language he can really express things in a poetic way sometimes so um it's not really a book that i think really has like a deep moral truth behind it uh, at least from my point of view, I, I guess I may, I may, unless I just miss something, um, I think it's more a book to just um, just kind of enjoy witnessing depraved human behavior. Well, if there is a deep moral truth, I think we I discussed it earlier, and I I think I made an argument against um, the morality of the characters. So from my point of view, I think he's describing characters that I think, in my view, in my humble view, are not, if you were to live like that your entire life, I don't think you're really living a, a life that has much meaning, really, to be honest with you. Um, so that, that's my position on that. But uh, anyways, um, that, that, that's kind of my, most of my thoughts on this. Um, but uh, look, I, I totally could be off on, on my reading of this book. Um, maybe the fact that I'm not a big drug user or maybe kind of a square. Maybe there's something in this that I just missed that, you know, people can enlighten me on. So if you have some thoughts, um, you know, feel free to comment below and give me your thoughts on it. And uh, if you like the review, just um, click the like button and uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel. So. Uh, I'll be um, 
hopefully making another uh, review sooner rather than later. Anyways, have a great day, guys.